Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship to say glad to see you here in the house of the Lord on this day. We are thankful that we are able to come to worship and to receive from God those gifts that he has to give us in worship this day. Special welcome and visiting with us. We are glad you're here in worship with us once again on this Sunday morning. A few announcements before we begin our worship. Just a reminder that this is the first Sunday of the month. It is LWML Mite Box Sunday. So if you've collected your mites, don't uh, forget to Add them to those bigger boxes, those purple white boxes around, I believe, one near the church uh, uh, narthex at the uh, Welcome Center. So make sure you have that with the mite boxes. Also in the bulletin, you see those mites go for different things, different grants through the Indiana District. And one of our highlight, our spotlight mission grants that the Indiana District LWML gives towards is a grant for Concordia Educational Association in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That uh, gives scholarships for those families with no church affiliation. So those mites will go to help support that grant in this time of need. Also, the LWML is collecting eyeglasses and sunglasses, that collection, and also new baby items. Uh, those are all being collected over here at a table near the offices. There, there's a, a collection point on that table. And uh, we ask that all those items be in by June 21st because it will be collected and brought to the National Convention, which is taking place in Lexington, Kentucky on June 24th to 27th. So those ladies that will be going to the National Convention will be taking those eyeglasses and sunglasses and new baby items with them to the convention that is happening later this month. So once again, if you have that, make sure you take that and uh, bring it here by June 21st so that those ladies can take it to the National Convention later at the end of the month. Also, if you haven't done so already, Evansville Lutheran School Golf Scramble is approaching 
It's next, this coming Saturday, Saturday, June 12th. It will take place at 8 a.m. Shotgun start out at Cambridge Golf Course. So if you would like to sign up for that, please see the blurb in the bulletin in regards to how to go about signing up once again for the ELS Golf Scramble that's taking place Saturday, June 12th out at Cambridge that morning. Then also, you've seen the last few weeks, just a reminder, VBS, God's Wonder Lab, is going to take place that following Saturday, Saturday, June 19th, from 8.30 to 12.30. This will have lunch included, and it's for children three years old through fifth grade, so please make it a point to sign children up of three to four, and then all the way up to fifth grade, sign them up for VBS. It is a one-day event this year, as we'll be having it uh, in the gym and outside over here in our green space area uh, off of Elsa Street. So once again, make sure you have your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, all those kids sign up for Vacation Bible School so we can plan accordingly in the weeks ahead. Our order of worship this day is as printed in our bulletin. We are using Divine Service Setting 3, so we'll be using that as printed in our bulletin this day. We ask God's blessings on our worship, and we begin with the Ring of the Bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to Him. The Lord is the strength of His people. He is the saving refuge of His anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be your shepherd and carry them forever. Blessed be the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, to God on high. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus, triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from the bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this day is from Genesis chapter 3. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field, and on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle from 2 Corinthians. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He's possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he cast out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit 
never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. When I was in seventh grade, I joined the Boy Scouts. I lasted for about six months. Uh, I enjoyed the Scouts. I enjoyed all the uh, camping activities and all the, the group uh, friends that I was meeting and all that. But there was uh, something that the Boy Scouts really did expect, uh, some commitment uh, from me and uh, some discipline and, and some of those things I wasn't really prepared uh, to do. And in fact, one of the things I struggled with the most, m- most might seem a little uh, easy, but they had this uh, ex- expectation that I would learn how to tie knots. Now, I could barely tie my shoelaces, and yet in order for me to get certain badges, I had to tie at least, I think, six or seven different types of knots. I actually looked these up because I don't remember from seventh grade, but I had to learn how to be a Boy Scout. I had to learn how to tie a square knot, a two half hitches, a tout line hitch, a sheet bend, a bow line, a clove hitch, and a timber hitch. Different ty- Who knew there were so many different types of knots? And these were just the ones that were expected the Boy Scouts. There's a lot more out there, a lot of other ways to tie uh, knots together. And uh, so I struggled uh, with just that aspect of Boy Scouts. And so apparently, no, um, no, the Boy Scouts was just not for me. I worked on that all week. (laughs) Tie knots. Uh, We probably... Uh, had some experience of tying at least the basic knots in life, but today I want to talk to you about another knot master out there, uh, the one that we contend with each and every day. He is a master of tying us up in knots, knots that we cannot set ourselves free from. Of course, I'm talking about the old evil foe, Satan himself. He knows how to twist and turn and tie us up in a variety of ways. Satan actually means adversary. Satan is an adversary of God, therefore an adversary of all those who belong to God. That's us. And Satan would have nothing better to do than to try to lead us away from our faith in Christ. And the easiest way for him to do this is to tie us up in all kinds of the knots of sin. And there are three specific knots that I want to talk to you about this morning. The knot of guilt, the knot of fear, and the knot of doubt. Many years ago, my first year as a pastor out in Kansas, within the first uh, few weeks of serving there, I was called by a social worker at the local hospital. She called and said there was a gentleman uh, there in the hospital who had no uh, church home, but he definitely needed some pastoral counseling. And so she called me. And so I showed up at the hospital. I walked into this room of this uh, frail man as he lay there on the hospital bed. I grabbed a chair and sat down. And I started talking with him a little bit. And he began the conversation with me simply this way. Pastor, does God love me? Of course, you know what the answer, of course, to that is. And of course, I was quickly, I quickly came back and said, yes, of course, God loves you. And he responded, I don't think so. He says, Pastor, I've lived a horrible life. I I, I shouldn't have done some of the things I've done, but I have. And I've hurt my wife, I've hurt my children, I've hurt my family. I've done some things I regret, made some terrible, poor decisions in life. I don't know God would want me to be better than than I am, but I have not lived the way I should. Pastor, there's no way that God could possibly love me. The knot of guilt. Maybe you and I have felt that at times. Guilt over sin. It's times we don't live the life that we know we should live. And those times when we commit a sin and we do the same sin over and over again. And we wonder to ourselves, have we gone too far? Can God still love me after all that I've done and the way I've lived and the mistakes I've made? Can God really still love me? 
And in those times of extreme guilt, guilt that weighs down upon us, there is the old evil foe tying us up in knots. You see, that's what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to, at first, as we encounter the temptations of life, he wants to minimize sin. It's not a big deal, right? Nobody's going to even know. It feels good. It feels right. Just do it. The devil wants to minimize sin. And as soon as we think that, as soon as we get engaged in that and we cooperate, he springs the trap. And then he maximizes sin. How could you do such a terrible thing, you wretched person? There is no way that God can love you. There's no way that God can forgive you this time. The devil ties us up in that knot of guilt. Sometimes the devil even works to tie us up in the knot of fear. Fear of the unknown fear of the future, anxiety and worry, an overwhelming sense of helplessness, uh, feeling out of control that things are happening around us that we just can't control. And so instead of trusting in the Lord who controls all things, we find ourselves overwhelmed by fear. This should sound familiar to us. We have lived in fear these last several months, couple years. We've lived in this fear of everything happening and being overwhelmed or tied up in that knot of fear. We, we trust. We trust. We'd rather trust in ourselves and our thoughts and our emotions. Or we, we put our trust in, in other people into authorities or governments or so-called experts out there, and they don't offer us anything besides more fear. Tied up in fear rather than faith in God. And sometimes the devil also ties us up with a knot of doubt. We've all experienced that. We know that God cares for us and loves us, But why did this happen? God, why did you allow my loved one to die? Or why did you allow this cancer or sickness? Where were you, God, when this happened? You seem so far away. How could you do this if you love me? That doubt that ties us up like ropes. A doubt in this lifetime and even a doubt towards the end of life. I was visiting with a member many, many years ago She was a lifelong believer, a lifelong Christian. She never knew a time in life where she didn't know and believe that God loved her, that she didn't trust in Christ alone. She never lived a life apart from any of that. She was very active in her churches, different churches she attended. Her faith spilled over in works, and she was a shining example for those who gathered around throughout her life, a shining example of what it means to be a believer in Christ. And now as she was older, she was in a, in a nursing home, in a nursing care facility, and I went to go visit her. She was in her 90s. She lay there in the bed there in the nursing home. We talked about things, and I said to her, sure seems like Jesus is about to keep his promise. He's coming for you. He's coming to take you away from this world. He's coming to take you to be with him in heaven. And she looked at me and a tear rolled down her cheek. And she said, I sure hope so. So much uncertainty. Even as darkness loomed, The darkness of death loomed in her life as death was drawing near and life was coming to an end. The devil was right there to tie her up in knots, the knot of doubt. Guilt and fear and doubt are just three of the knots, of the many knots, the snares that entrap us. The devil seeks to tie us up and bind us and restrain us. As God's people. But we know one who is stronger than the devil. Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the one who has come to defeat the power of Satan and to loosen all those knots and to forgive all of our sins. He is the one. And Jesus says in our gospel reading, he says, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions 
unless he first ties up the strong man. And that's why Jesus came. He came that he might tie up the strong man who binds us in sin and guilt. Jesus came that he might defeat the power of the devil. And he has. But he did not do that with some fantastic show of power and strength, though he was much stronger and is much stronger than the devil. He did not come and destroy the devil and all his minions of evil. Jesus, the strong one, became weak. He humbled himself. He took upon himself our frail, weak flesh and allowed the devil to defeat him Jesus allowed himself to be tied up, to be bound by our sins and the sins of the world, tied up and lashed to a criminal's cross. On the cross, Jesus was bound by your sin and and my sin, the sin of guilt and fear and doubt and all those other things that we have. Jesus was tied up to the cross. Though he is God, he could have destroyed the power of the devil. He could have bent those nails and removed the cross, but no, he humbled himself. The strong one became the weak one and suffered in our place. And at his death, he was bound up, tied up, and restrained and those burial garments placed in the grave. We confess in the Apostles' Creed, I believe that Jesus was crucified, died, and was buried. And then we say, He descended into hell. You were close. Dead and buried and descended into hell. What do we mean by that? We don't mean that Jesus went into hell so that he could suffer the pains and the torments of our sin. That took place on the cross. On the cross, Jesus literally experienced that torment and separation of hell on the cross. But when we confess in our creed that he descended into hell, that was not a march of defeat. That was a victory lap Jesus went into the pit of hell, into the halls of hell, so he could bind up the strong man, Satan himself. Jesus bound him with his cross and bound him with this empty tomb. He tied up the master of knots. He tied him up and destroyed his power over us. Because the devil's power over us is sin, and Christ has destroyed the power of sin. He has forgiven us. In the original language of the New Testament in Greek, the word that is most often used to describe forgiveness is pronounced leo. Leo, when translated, means to untie to loose, to unbind, to release from captivity. That's what Jesus has done. He has loosed us. He has loosed us from our sins because He has taken our sins upon Himself and He has risen from the grave. He has loosed us from the power of the devil and sin and death. We have no need to be afraid of the old evil foe who tries to entrap us by our guilt and fear and doubt. We have no reason to be afraid because Jesus is the strong man, the one risen from the grave who has defeated all of our enemies and loosed us, loosed us from our sins. Martin Luther put it this way, though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us. We tremble not. We fear no ill. They shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl, fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged. He's judged. The deed is done. 
one little word can fell him. One little word. One little word, Jesus, has the power to remove all guilt. One little word, Jesus, has the power to dispel all fear. One little word, Jesus, has the power to cast away all doubt. One little word, Jesus. As a gentleman lay there in the hospital, as he said to me, there's no way God can love me, Pastor. I said to him, but he does. And you know how I know? Because Jesus died on the cross for you, for your sins. No matter what you've done, no matter how you've lived your life, Jesus' death was for you. He's buried in a grave for you. And he rose from the grave in victory for you. Do not be afraid. Do not doubt, I said to him. Your sins are forgiven. Yes, Jesus loves you. He turned his head away from me and looked out the window for just a moment. And as he turned back to me, there was tears flowing down his cheeks. And he said, Yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you, Jesus. He died two weeks later, but he died with something he had never had in his life. He died with peace. He died with peace. Peace casts out all guilt and all fear and all doubt. He died with peace because he knew, he knew that Jesus is the strong one who has bound up the devil and destroyed the power of sin and death. He died in peace because he knew that one little word, Jesus. And so for you and I, as we live in this world, as the devil continues to try to to destroy us and lead us away from God. He sets his traps and he tries to tie us up in all these knots of sin. We are not afraid. One little word. Jesus has loosed us. He has loosed us from the power of the devil and sin and death. We are forgiven in Christ now and forever. One little word, Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the offertory on page 8. Please stand. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ, our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confessions for the sake of your grace, 
and promising deliverance from sin and its curse. So comfort your people here at St. Paul's, especially Gary Davis, John Davis Jr., Leslie Davis, Marlene Davis, Jeremy and Haley Dethridge, and Bill and Sue Dethridge, by the forgiveness of sins, and give us hope in the promise of eternal life and your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, give courage to your church, O Lord, that as we believe, so we also would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope that we have in him, that we too will be raised and brought into his presence. Be with those who serve as missionaries, Pastor Michelle Liu in the Chinese mission, Pastor Paul and family, and Brian and Barb Sorge, as they proclaim your message of salvation. Embolden all of us by your spirit to confess this Christian faith from a lively conscience that for Christ's sake, grace may extend to more and more people and increase thanksgiving to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, your son was rejected on earth, even by his own friends and relatives. Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth, especially to those who cannot find agreement within their own families on the word of God, from which life itself comes from. Assure them that their stand for your truth is necessary. Guard them from seeking a false or easier peace, and turn us in every earthly disappointment toward the promise of your eternal and undivided church triumphant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, no kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation with its government. Frustrate the work of Satan and the seeds of destruction that he would sow in every place. Unite our leaders and our people for the common good, while leading us to the hope in the eternal kingdom that is not of this world. Watch over the downtrodden and those food pantry recipients who have requested our prayers with your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear Eternal Lord God, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly tent, especially be with Vernon Wells, Nancy Eikenberry, Hudson Holler, Nick Sawyer, Cindy Westfall, Gary Burke, Will Heapsman, Jeff Kachanik, Becky Kachanik, Joanne Causey, Bob Fender, Leora Horst, Sue Travis, and Nora Hancock. Do not let them lose heart, but fix their eyes beyond what is transient to the things unseen. By this slight momentary affliction, prepare them for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, when at last you will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Lord, in your mercy, your gracious Lord, you gave Adam and Eve each other, knowing that they complemented one another, not only as man and woman, but as husband and wife. We thank you for those couples who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. For Gary and Darlene Parker, Mark and Linda Kell, Bucky and Robin Houston, Brian and Barb Sorge, and Alan and Rita Brown. Be with all couples as you remind them of your love even when they fall into sin against one another and you. Be with also those who are single and desi desiring a spouse. Give to them your peace as they continue to put you at the center of their life. For may we all give thanks for the gift of relationships and the beauty of life that you alone bestow and sustain. Lord, in your mercy, for what was lost in paradise has been regained by the conquering wounds of your Son, crucified and risen. In him we are restored as your children and made bold to ask for every need as we lifted unto your throne of grace. Hear us for Jesus' sake and in his name, who lives and reigns with you the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord, thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.